Welcome back everybody, we're reading some more nice guys today, reading about entitled people in every single episode, and yeah, I'm very excited and I hope you guys are too. There's something so fun and addictive about reading nice guy conversations, and let's get into it, enjoy guys. Do you have a girlfriend? Sigh. No. I've been told that I'm too sweet and caring and nice, but I don't know. I honestly just try to be me. Wow, okay. <laughs> Do you have a girlfriend? No, I'm too nice. <laughs> I'm the most sweet and caring and wonderful person ever, and that's why I'm single. Don't get it confused. There are definitely no other reasons. Trust me, it's because I'm too nice. That's such a weird response, and you pretty much immediately know that it isn't true. Good start to the episode. What is up, you absolute gorgeous? F word. Um, excuse me? It was a compliment, don't worry. Yeah, I think it only counts as a compliment if I take it that way. How can you not take that as a compliment? I called you an absolutely gorgeous F word. The only possible wrong thing is calling you a F word. But with it being 2023, I can't really call you a woman or a man without knowing for damn sure what your preferences are. So F word or human are the two best solutions. So I stick with F word for a bit of flair. I'd rather you call me a human than a F word because calling me a beautiful you know what sounds super sexual and I'd prefer not to be sexualized within the first five seconds of meeting somebody. Also, you could just ask what those person's preferences are instead of assuming anything. Well, my bad, but the compliment and question still stands without the F word. Okay, this is how you treat everyone who compliments you. I never took it as a compliment, so no. Oh, damn, you're too much of a stuck up B arch. <laughs> Holy crap, get that stick out of your butt and enjoy a freaking compliment. Compliment. Wow, has the audacity to say something like that, as in the first thing they said, and then gets upset at this person because they didn't think it was a compliment? Bro, it's not a compliment. <laughs> oh my god, they're impossible. Like, don't try and use logic on a nice guy. Logic is their worst enemy. It's not like they said something super lovely or anything. And also, even if they did, that doesn't mean they're owed something now. I complimented you one time and you're still not dating me. What's wrong with the world? Yeah, like this comment says, fear not woman, it's a compliment. Yes, how dare I not understand such a simple gesture? You before and after learning it was a compliment. Yeah, like, whoa, 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 it was a compliment, okay? As in them saying that it was a compliment makes everything better. It doesn't. I kinda don't care if women want to meet in public for a first date. I'm more comfortable at home and I appear better as a potential companion. I'm a good guy, just trying to get to know you in an honest and nice sort of way. The least you can do for my effort is compromise on location. Okay, bad attitude. After all, my apartment is small and the door is two steps away at all times. Ha ha. Not to mention how insulting the skepticism is to a nice guy. I ain't just looking for that you know what, but rather testing if you have the willingness to give me the benefit of the doubt out of respect. All's good if not, I'll just keep looking. And if I don't find someone, at least I didn't have to waste and negate my money or my time and preferences. Bro, nobody's gonna go to your house for a first date. And why wouldn't you want to meet them somewhere? Like the two top comments say, yeah, Dave. Dating is all about making sure only you are comfortable. And somehow his exclusive comfort is the compromise that he'd like from his date. Ha ha. Yeah, you're not compromising, are you, dude? Nobody's going to be comfortable going to your house for the first date. And also, it doesn't sound fun. And the attitude of being like, oh, I'm a good guy, so you should do it. First of all, why do you need to say that you're a good guy? And also, even if you are a good guy, people aren't going to want to do that. That's so confusing. Like, literally, just to look at our situation, the guy you're talking to, you literally just said you like him because he's nice and patient and maybe even mature or whatever. That's it. Like, am I not patient or nice either? I've literally been waiting six years. That's a freaking patient. I'm very, very nice. All the times you went ape crap to me, I've been understanding and I helped you in every stage of your chaotic life. That's being nice. But nope, nothing attractive ever applies to me ever. I'm a effing, you know what, alien. Oh God. I've used money on every single dating app and I've read so many books on the statistics of these completely biased apps to game the system to give me a chance. And I've hired a dating coach who was a dear friend who's now studying to be a psychotherapist who remade all of my dating profiles online and changed all of my behaviours and taught me everything about relationships who deemed me completely normal and still we couldn't get any matches on dating apps and I was doing my best to meet people by spending money on flight tickets to come back to Toronto on standby to get a chance to date. She even took candid photos of me, used everything she knew 
knew of her research to give me the best chance and I still got no matches. And every single friend who has tried to set me up, the person has never had any interest to even meet me. My only ever even real chance is with the religious girl who gave me a chance because I wasn't Christian. Everybody else has been harsh rejections or just a refusal to let me even have a date. It put so much pressure on me because of this. Put so much pressure because of the lack of opportunities that I feel I have to be not only perfect, but that when a person comes along I have to execute perfectly to not waste time. And I also have to live with reading all of these goddamn lame ass statistics from places like Harvard and other Ivy League schools who have done research on dating that I essentially have no chance because I'm Asian. It's so freaking dumb and I don't want to believe it, but it definitely feels real. Like I guess I'm just an alien. There are no other messages here. Like that's not a conversation. And what did they say at the end there? That they don't have a chance because they're Asian? And what, they were saying they read a study that said that or something? Like what do you mean? Like half of this didn't even make any sense. And it was so bitter and angry. Like oh yeah, somebody's gonna respond to this well. Of course they're not. This doesn't make somebody want to talk. And also them saying they've been their friend for six years. Yeah, like this comment says. If I understand this correctly, they've been friends for six goddamn years and it turns out that he was never a friend. He was just waiting for his chance. That's just sad. I feel for this girl to find out that you never had a friend in the first place. Yeah, a million percent. Like if you're only talking to somebody in the hopes that eventually they're going to fall in love with you or something and then you get super bitter and angry like this, that isn't much of a friend. And they said there, I'm very nice. All the times you went ape crap on me, I've been understanding. As in like, I put up with your crap, so when are you going to date me? I've been so patient. And also hiring a dating coach? And what, just assuming that they know what they're talking about? They're looking at this from the completely wrong angle. It's weird. They're treating it like a game or something. Like having a partner isn't something that you win or something. It's not a prize. You're forming a relationship with a person, but they're getting all strategic and hiring people and all this sort of stuff and still has a super bad attitude. Super entitled attitude too. Only focused about what they're going to get out of the situation. Being a guy sucks. You try to do something nice and you're a creep. Don't do anything and you're worthless and you're selfish. People do nice stuff for people all day, every day, all over the place and it doesn't mean they're creepy. What was this thing you did where you were trying to be nice? Where you may be trying to be nice so you could get something in return? That's something else that nice guys hate. Taking responsibility for their actions or acknowledging that maybe they might be in the wrong about something. Every time we read about a nice guy, they think they're the victim. They don't take accountability for bloody anything. And there's so much mental gymnastics and such a lack of logic, it doesn't even make any sense. Hey, you all right? Please tell me you come to or are in the UK. I'm good. No, I have no interest in traveling to the UK. Haha, <laughs> okay. Madness. Do you go gym? No, but I should. I'm weak AF. How about you? Ha, <laughs> okay. You have a nice body. What do you think by looking at my pictures and videos? Ha <laughs> ha. You look like a bodybuilder. I'm not, but thank you. I go gym two or three times a week because of my job. Bodyguarding. Oh, cool. I do boxing and wrestling too. What's your ethnicity? Caucasian and Swedish. Why? No reason. Just wondering. Because you're thick and curvy too. Yeah, genetics I guess. Same. Ha <laughs> ha. As in, I've not took steroids or protein shakes or creatine. Just food and hard work and good genetics. Yeah, hard work pays off. Always. Are there Pakistanis in Sweden? Yeah, we basically have all different kinds of people here. That's nice. Have you ever been with a Pakistani guy? No. Not your type. Do you think I'm attractive? I've only been with two people, so I just haven't been with all different people. No, you're not my type, but that's just because I don't like men with muscles. Ah, okay, nice, fair enough, but what about my face? I wouldn't know. I only get attracted to people if I have strong feelings for them. Yeah, I get you, and I understand. Might come see you. No response. I would love to meet up and see you, not gonna lie. No response. Hi, babe. Do you hate me? Babe, you okay? Don't call me babe. Don't be so moody. So what, putting up boundaries makes me moody? I'm British. We say babe, darling, hun in our English vocab. Such a rude, fat blob you are. Doesn't change what I'm comfortable with. Yeah, I can be rude, but I wasn't rude now. And it's obvious that I'm fat, so that's not going to bother me. Hmm, you're thick and curvy, not fat. I'd love to see the reactions you get from random men when you call them babe. Huh? I wouldn't mind. I haven't spoken to you in ages. I was just being nice and polite. Sorry. Thank you, though. This is going to fit perfectly into nice guys. True. I don't want to meet up and see you, to be honest. Not going to lie. I was only being nice and polite after saying such a rude fat blob you are. Yeah, you see the issue here? Probably not, even though it's so obvious. Hello. I know it's late and all, and you probably don't remember me. You sold me your math textbook on campus a few weeks ago, and I kept your number because you seemed really nice. Uh, thank 
thank you, but that's strange. I know, I know, but give it a chance. I also think you're really beautiful and the pins on your backpack indicate that we have similar interests. Let's get coffee tomorrow and catch a movie. Look, I don't know you, plus I'm already seeing someone. Thank you though. Oh, BS, you're not seeing anyone because any man wouldn't have let you out of the house looking the way that you did. Me? I'm a nice guy, a gentle intellectual soul who would only have a lady's best interest at heart. I would make sure you were cared for and protected. Whoa, yeah, I'm done here. Don't contact me again. Oh, you're done here? No, I am dome here. You're a real C word. A demented one at that. Have fun with your boyfriend, who in all probability is just a jock F buddy who's gonna bed you and toss you out the next day. Piece of trash you are. Well, yeah, you're such a nice guy. A gentle intellectual soul. How can you actually be that delusional? I'm so gentle and kind and loving. Calls them a demented C word. As you can see, I'm so nice. Okay, we've got some nice guy stories here. He really dropped the being nice to women doesn't work to get with them. So I met this guy at a Halloween party. I was super drunk and we made out. One of my friend got weird vibes, but everybody else loved him since he was so sweet to me. Getting me water, something to eat, keeping an eye on me. I didn't remember much about the night, but I trusted their judgment and I went on two dates with him. He was nice and we shared a lot of interests. Looking back, he may have echoed back what I was passionate about to me. He seemed kind of smitten, always telling me how funny I am and that I'm amazing. I did like him, but he just wasn't my type when I was sober. There was no spark, so I told him. But I said that if he's okay with that by any chance, I'd love to be friends. He agreed and said that he couldn't be emotionally vulnerable with anybody anyway, which surprised me because he shared a lot of insecurities unprompted on our second date. He said we should probably not hang out alone though, rather in groups. Fine by me. But then he asked me to hang out and get a coffee and I agreed. As friends, of course. I was enthusiastic about it, but he seemed kind of cold while texting. When we were hanging out, he kept on mentioning how we just wanted to hang out because I'm his quote-unquote break from studying. And he also kept making fun of my driving anxiety when I mentioned it. But really over the top and not in a funny sort of way. It just felt mean. That whole behavior made me feel so dumb for being enthusiastic about seeing him. And the cold text continued after that. When he wanted to hang out again, I kind of mirrored his cold negative tone. And he ghosted me after that. He commented under my Instagram post a while later and I liked his comment. It wasn't one that somebody could really reply much to. And then I saw him at the mall with his friends and I gave him a friendly wave. He smiled back. Literally a day later, he deleted and blocked me on most socials. I was so confused, but I didn't want to disrespect his boundaries. So I sent him a text saying how he doesn't have to reply, of course, since he blocked me elsewhere. But if he's comfortable, I'd like to know what happened. First, he said he felt like the friendship was one-sided and that he doesn't like getting coffee when being friends with women. Then why did he ask me to get coffee, but rather takes night walks and cuddles? I told him how I felt about the friendship being one-sided and that cuddling is just too intimate for me, for just a platonic male friend. He sent me a long wall of text where he was very passive aggressive towards me, saying that he wasn't thinking about cuddling with me anyway, and how it's silly that he rants like this to me of all people. He said he noticed that being nice doesn't work to get with women anyway, since he's just reduced to his looks. So now he jumps to any opportunity and reduces himself to his looks, and it's so crappy to see how that works on dating apps, etc. All that frustrated nice guy monologue. So weird. I really thought he was a genuinely nice guy, but God was I wrong. Yeah, the frustrated nice guy monologue. Like how many of them have we read just today? It's like the nice guy trademark. And yeah, what? You're gonna be friends, but you're gonna cuddle and stuff? Like obviously, they don't want to be friends. Yeah, at least it's all over now, OP. The next one is called Nice Guy Finds Me When I'm Trying to Put Away Groceries. Recently, I was walking home from university in the evening. I'd stopped to buy a couple of groceries on the way, including some cold things. This will be relevant later. Anyway, I was nearly home when this random guy stopped me and said that he was visiting my city for a few days and wanted to know what there is to do around here. Honestly, there isn't much, and I told him that. The only thing I could think of was to recommend a museum. I was wearing a shirt from a nearby research lab, so he rightfully assumed I liked science. He takes that opportunity to tell me all about his publications, which are in a similar field to what I'm studying. I get excited, mostly surprised to run into somebody in public who's in the same field that I am. It's not one of those popular science ones you see often. He stops and asks me if I'm under or over 18. A bit weird, but I assume it's because I look young, and a lot of guys don't want to look like they're talking to a kid in public at night. I tell him I'm over 18, just being honest, so he keeps talking to me. After telling me more about his research, I tell him I need to go home to put my groceries away. My cold items need to go in the fridge. He suddenly looks very disappointed and asked me to listen to him talk about more of his research. It was interesting stuff that I did want to hear more about, so I figured staying out a little longer wouldn't be a huge issue. Another spiel later and I really do need to put my cold things in the fridge. He asked me for my phone number so that he can keep talking about his research. Again, it's interesting, so I gave it to him. I thought that was all he'd be using the number 
before. He then says I can go. Weird that he thought that I couldn't, but he wants to meet up later that night to get drinks once I've put things in the fridge. When I make it clear that I don't want to go out again after going home, he insists that I should put the cold things in the fridge in his hotel room so that I never actually go home and can thus stay out and we can have dinner and get drinks and watch a movie. I tell him I really need to go home. I'm tired after studying all day and I need to put my groceries away. He insists on walking me the rest of the way home. I see no point in arguing. Oh no. He's probably going to tag along regardless of what I tell him. Plus, I live in a large apartment building with secure doors. Even if he does follow me the entire way, I still take a different route home. While we're walking, I tell him I'm not interested in dating him and he says that's disappointing but he'll accept it. But then he talks all about how the reason he's accepting of it is because he believes in consent and he's a caring person. Oh my god. He says we should still get dinner, drinks and a movie regardless tomorrow night and that he doesn't drink alcohol so I don't need to worry about him making drunken advances. It'll strictly be as friends. I say maybe. Just wanted to get out of the situation. I'd figured out by that point that if I had said no, he would have just changed the topic and asked me again shortly after. Finally, I get to a random building and I say that I'm home. Thank you for walking me. Just the pleasantries I default to when I'm not sure what else to do. Luckily, he takes my word and leaves before I try to go inside. Once he's out of sight, I run in the opposite direction and I continue taking a different route to my actual building. I'm home. I finally get to put my things in the fridge and go to sleep. But he texts me to remind me that we agreed to go out tomorrow night. Again, I only said maybe because he wouldn't listen if I said no. Now that I'm in a safe environment, I explicitly tell him that I'm not interested in going out with him, even as a friend, and especially if he's going to make it date activities like dinner or a movie. Then I turn off my phone and I go to bed. I didn't hear from him again until the following evening when he texted saying that he'll meet me at so-and-so restaurant at so-and-so time. I told him I wasn't doing that. I never agreed to go out with him. He starts trying to say that I did agree and so I have to go out. And it's his last night in the city so there's no other chance. I'd hope so. And I was so nice to him and he was so nice to me. I'd stayed home that day to avoid any chance of running into him. And I wasn't about to go out now, especially not to see him. So I again told him I wasn't interested, blocked him quickly after just to avoid thinking about it. As a side note, I want to point out how sketchy it is that he accepted me not wanting to go out with him because he's all for consent and he's an understanding and nice person. Not only did he clearly not accept it, but he kept trying anyway. Something, something, actions mean more than words. It's amazing that some guys think respecting consent is not just the bare minimum, but enough to make them a truly nice person. Also, unfortunately, a trend I've seen in other posts here. Oh, that's so awful. And definitely enough for today. Yeah, that's bloody horrifying. Like, oh yeah, I do the absolute bare minimum. So therefore, I'm entitled to you or something. Gross. Yeah, that's enough nice guys for today. Let's read something wholesome. I saved him from my collie, but I needn't have worried for he was already armed with a blade. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> Little fella is ready for battle. I love that so much. Lately, I've been playing the spider wick game on the Wii, which by the way, is so fun. And it reminds me of that little rat guy. What's his name? Thimble Tech. That's it. So cute. Me after finding that perfect video to eat my food with. Yeah, how true is that? And if not a video, a Simpsons episode. Easy to swallow pills. You're amazing. Oh, you're amazing. Me not doing anything for Valentine's Day. My wife not caring because I'm good to her all year. Yeah, true. That's a good point. It shouldn't be like one day a year that you do something nice. You do it all year round. Oh yeah, this one. Weird, but long time ago when I felt scared alone during 2 to 4 a.m. I would always think about bakers in their bakery who were already up during that time doing their thing and somebody responded former bakery employee here if you're ever sad or scared at 3 in the morning just remember that we're up preparing donuts and the donuts are warm for you yeah how cute the top comment says wholesome story once I was at a party at some friends in the middle of summer I wasn't in a healthy place at the time around 5am I go for a walk alone to clear my mind I love walking early in the morning because it's so peaceful and at some point I bump into some stranger who was in fact delivering some hot pastries to a bakery he and I apologised and he must have felt that I wasn't good because he asked me if I was alright and gave me some hot croissants to comfort me it was a small gesture but it gave me a huge smile and I think about it way more often than I should when I'm down oh that's so beautiful I didn't expect the comment to be even more wholesome than the post that's so awesome we adopted an 11 year old cat from a shelter in Chicago he and my 13 year old daughter fell in love this is them after she got back from a week at camp oh that's so cute cats are so perfect I know I say it in like every single episode but they really are and on that note thank you for watching everybody I hope you had a wonderful time and if you did and you want to see more nice guy episodes make sure you like and subscribe and the comment of the day today goes to zero felix 7090 am I the a-hole for getting up to eat while my cat is snuggling me under the blanket even though it's been over an hour and my foot is falling asleep yes the answer is yes oh yeah definitely <laughs> how dare you come on
one. That's absolutely not okay. I can't believe you've done this, Zero Felix 7090. Despicable behavior. That's such a funny comment. Thank you for all the support, guys. I feel like the videos have been so fun lately. Already excited for tomorrow's episode. And with that being said, make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!